Hi everyone, it's Dolly. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. So today I have a project share as well as a tutorial. I feel like I have not done a tutorial in a while, so I'm really happy to be able to do one today for you. So as you can see here, the theme of this video will be all about the tea bags. And I, what I'm gonna be doing is I am gonna be doing a tutorial on one of these items which will be these sachet tea bags. The remainder of these tea bags, I will be linking the tutorials below, um, and those tutorials are where I actually learned how to make them. So I'm gonna show you um, each of the items first, at least one of each of the different types of tea bags or tea bag holders before we get started. So the first, tea bag is what I like to call just an embellishment and I love this because these are perfect for inserting in any type of project even a flip book even a um, junk journal they're really cute and you guys they also serve as um, book markers so they've actually got a purpose for them and they are so fun to make also very easy so I'm going to show you uh, one or two of these close up so that you can see how cute these little tea bag embellishments are. I just had so much fun with these and um, I learned these on YouTube as well um, from a gal named Mari Hop and her tutorial is very very simple to follow so as you can see these are just little embellishments that look like little tea bags and I think they would make really nice bookmarkers. So again, these little tea bags were um, inspired by a YouTuber named Mari Hop and she is very creative and I will link her YouTube channel below. So here are just a few that I've made. And I'd love to be able to stick these in some happy mail. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these right back. And I really wish I had time to do a tutorial for all of these, but unfortunately this video would go way too long. So I chose one of the projects to do the tutorial on. And that would be these sachets. Okay, so the next tea bag would be these beautiful sachet tea bags, you guys. And look at how gorgeous these are. These tea bags were inspired by a YouTuber named Ida, who is with Created to Create. I'm gonna also link that tutorial below. And I would love to do a tutorial on this, you guys, but it was, I have to admit, these were a little more difficult to make out of everything on this table here. So these beautiful tea bags are made using organza um, trim. And as you can see, I've got the little sachet palettes inside and they smell so good. But the problem is you guys making these was a little bit difficult because you actually have to use a, a hot glue gun. And I have to admit, I burned myself a couple of times because you have to you have to glue these together with just hot glue gun and um, organza is not the easiest thing to work with so I'd rather share the tutorial with you than showing you because like I said it would take way too long but I love these because I think they would make great embellishments to pack up and share with your friends and as far as the organza trim you can get them in various colors so I found the mint green, the peach, um, pink, and blue, and also gold. So the very first one that I tried making, I used the netting, you guys. And as you can see, a lot of the little um, palettes already came out because of the netting, the holes are too big. So you really have to use this type of trim which is like i said the organza and again these are so much fun to make and um, you guys should check out the video below all right the other thing that i wanted to share with you that i created are these little tea bag holders and 
These were first introduced to me by my friend Corn at Cornflower Crafts. There is also another gal by the name of Joan Robertson who creates these little mini double tea pocket or tea bag holders and I'm going to link her tutorial below as well. So as you can see these are double sided. You can add your little tea bags to both sides and they're just so much fun. I really enjoyed making these and for me I think the best part about these little tea bag holders was that they were so easy to make and I think these make such great gifts. If you guys are having a tea party or you know any kind of tea themed party these make great gifts and um, cute little uh, goodies to lay on the table. They're just so pretty. So you can use um, all kinds of paper with this. As you can see, I kind of just use the double-sided paper and I thought using the double-sided uh, paper to make this um, made them really, really pretty. I also use a lot of washi tape on these. I wanted the edges to be finished. So you just pick your tea and insert them in there. This one is the fourth one that I made and I'm missing a tea bag. I think I may have drank it. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, so these are really fun and I highly recommend checking out um, either Cornflower Crafts or Joan Robertson. They both do such a great tutorial on these tea bag holders. So the last item that I have are these tea bag sachets and these are really easy to make you guys. I don't know if these have been made on YouTube, but I decided that I wanted to make these after having such a difficult time putting the fragrance beads in these organza um, trims and they kept like popping out and um, I burned myself a few times using the glue gun, so I thought I'm going to try something safer. And so, again, this is a disclosure. I don't know if anybody else has done this on YouTube, but what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you my process and my tutorial on how to make these little fragrant sachet bags. And you guys, these smell so good. And what I was thinking is I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to hang it in, in my car. Um, maybe on the rear view mirror because they smell so good and I think when the sun hits it it's going to make my car smell even better. So these were like I said so easy to make and so fun to make. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of these and then we're going to clear this out so that I can show you guys how to make these little sachets. So let me show you the first one. And you guys these are um, sachets that are made with vintage book pages as well as napkins and all you do is the glue stick napkin transfer on these which makes it even more easier to put together and I think that's why I went really crazy making these and had so much fun is because I did these while watching TV and um, it took only a few minutes to create these. And you could use any napkin um, for napkin transfer that you have. If you want to do a C themed, you could definitely use a uh, C themed napkin. If you want to use a Paris themed napkin, go for it. You could do so much with these. So yeah, these are my tea bag sachets. I'm going to go ahead and put these back because I want to go ahead and get started with the actual tutorial. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you what you will need to start creating these cute little sachets. I'm going to go ahead and put one out here. So that you guys can see them. Some of them look more vintage than others because of the type of paper that I used. I may have used an older book. Okay, so let's get started with what supplies you will need. The first thing you will need is an old book where uh, you don't mind tearing out pages. And what I like to do is I like to take an old book with pages that look worn, aged, 
or vintage and this is an old reader's digest book i've been tearing pages from this so i do not mind using this at all i will um also use this cover in a journal um probably you know in the future but for now i'm using the vintage pages from this to create my little projects all right so you will need this uh, a page let's go ahead you guys and i'm gonna just tear the page out so that we can move this book out of the way later yeah and it doesn't have to be cut out it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you take the page that you want to use out of the book the other thing we're going to need we're going to need glue we're also going to need a stapler and if you want you can use a ruler i don't really think you need a ruler but that's up to you you're also going to need of course your glue stick and you're also going to need some twine or um, some cross stitching uh, thread or whatever it is that you call this and you could also use jute string or twine if you prefer um, let's see of course you need your napkin print uh, you have to select a print that you want to transfer onto the paper um, it's always good to have your scissors and I don't know that we're really going to need the scissors, but who knows. And what else? Okay, so you're also, you may want to have your distress oxide for um, aging, aging or um, distressing the edges of your uh, sachets. And this is optional. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. The other item and the final item that you're going to need are your um, sachet beads. And you guys... I just bought these at Ross and they come in a pack of, gosh, this has one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a dozen, I believe. And these are um, high fragrance sachets. And again, you could find these almost everywhere. Um, for a dozen, I paid only $3.99 at Ross and these smell so good. This one is Rainforest Jasmine and then this one is Ocean Breeze. So what I've used for the uh, sachets that I made are actually um, a different fragrance. It was from this bag right here. I forget what this was called, but isn't that cute? It's a, it's a mermaid design. And so let me show you what the little sachet beads look like. They're gonna look like this. They almost look like little gold nuggets. And I'm gonna put some on my hand. See how pretty they are? They're actually really pretty. So a lot of times they're gonna be in this color, um, but not always. You may get some beads that are not this color, but they smell really, really good. So um, I have been using this and one bag actually made all of the sachet, um, the sachet tea bags that I created and I still have some left. So I'm sure that just one of these can actually make several of these sachet tea bags, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave these here for now so that you can see. So basically this is all we're gonna need to create these little fragrant sachet tea bags. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all of this now so that we can get started move all of my tools aside all right so let's start with our book page i'm going to move our book aside and what we're going to do is we are going to create the tea bag first and so um there's not really a lot of measuring i don't think it's important that it has to have exact measurements but what you do want to have is once you've created one go ahead and use that as your kind of your sample tea bag that you could um, put your paper against to measure. So I'm gonna guess that this tea bag measures about two inches in width. It's about it's about two inches in width. A little bit bigger. I think this one might be. Yeah, this one's a little smaller than that one. See, all of my tea bags are not the same size, you guys. So this is about two inches in width, and that's really what you're gonna try to accomplish is getting a uh, piece of paper that's about two inches in width. So all I do is I fold this about one third of the way, approximately one third of the way. And then I take the other side and do the same thing. And I do a guesstimate. And so what I'm gonna do is, that's about two inches. 
So that matches. Did that make sense, you guys? Because this is gonna be your tea bag right here. It's gonna lay like that or the other way, just like that. So again, I always like to take one that I've finished and use that to measure the width. Okay, so all you're gonna do then is you're gonna go ahead, fold it, and we're gonna go ahead and glue this, you guys, because we want this closed off. So all I do is I take my glue, and I'm gonna take the other side as well. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's closed. Okay, all right, there you go. Let that dry a little bit. So then once you've got your glue, you're gonna take this and you are gonna fold it back just like this. You fold it over again, where you just glued the closing should be on the outside facing you so that you could see it. Okay, let me go ahead and here is where we fold it and then I fold it back, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take each side and fold them forward now. So I take about probably a quarter of an inch, and this is just guessing. Again, you do not have to be exact in your measurements, you guys. All I'm gonna do is um, fold it upwards, Let's see? And I'm guessing this is about a quarter of an inch, and I am gonna fold that over and crease it. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side, so. All I do is I usually line up the top like that to get the exact crease measurement. Okay, so there, there it is. I folded this so that it looks almost like an M. See that? Or W. But as you can see, what ended up happening when I folded this is that my opening is in the inside so that it's hidden, it's covered. Okay, so we're gonna eventually close this top off and before we do that, I wanna go ahead and do the napkin transfer, okay? So what we wanna do is, we're gonna go ahead and do a napkin transfer design right over here. I want this to be my front. And of course the back is gonna be upside down, but that's okay because this is how your book page reads. You're not gonna have both sides facing the right um, direction, but that's all right. So let's go ahead and take our napkin design and choose a piece or two pieces, one to put on the front and one to put on the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel the layers off of this. I believe this one has two layers. Yeah, here, so this is your first layer and this is your second layer. We can just get rid of these two pieces now, put these aside. And I've shown you guys how to do napkin transfers before, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quick on this as well. So I like this red flower here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and select this right here to transfer onto my paper, okay? And it doesn't have to be a large piece. It can be just a small area. Okay, I like that. And then I'm gonna choose another piece for the back. And I think what I'll do for the back is a bird. So I really like the bird. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select the bird. And I got a piece of his beak, um, but that's okay. All right, so I want that little bird right there. So let's go ahead and start the glue stick transfer. And in this case, you could either a put apply the glue on the napkin directly or you can apply it here but the only thing with applying it directly to the paper is sometimes you get um, a wider area that has all the glue on it and it becomes really really sticky so all right just gently apply the glue so it doesn't rip and I want the flower I think I want the flower on the back because I think I like the bird and I want the bird to show um, on the right side where the, uh, where the type is the right side up. Okay, so there you go. Now I'm gonna take the bird and I've chosen the bird because the writing is uh, in the right direction on this side. And that's the part that I wanna display as my front. Okay. All right, I'm kind of doing this 
messy and quick, but it's just to give you guys an idea of how you can do these napkin transfers fairly easily. Okay, I wanna lower this a little bit so I have room on top to fold. Okay, you guys, that's it. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this glue stick off and just make sure that your transfer is on there securely. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold the top. But before we fold the top, we wanna go ahead and um, put our little sachet beads inside. So I'm gonna take the remaining sachet beads that I have from this used packet, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of the beads in here. You don't wanna to put too much, just a little bit. Um, you guys, these sachet beads go a long way. They smell really strong, so even just a little bit in these little pouches, oh my gosh, you could smell them. They smell so good. And like I said, I would love to put one in my car um, just so I can smell it when the sun hits it. So here's what you're gonna do, I'm sorry. So now, with the opening here, you're gonna go ahead and you are going to fold both of the corners downwards to form little triangle folds. And what I like to do is I, you know, you can fold them so they meet. Let me give you an example. Oops, sorry, I dropped some pieces. You can fold them so they meet, but I like to put a gap in between. So let me put these back, these fell, these little beads. Okay. So here's what I like to do. I like to put a little bit of a space between the folds, just like this. Let me show you closer. Just like that. See that little space? You're gonna do the same to the other side. You're gonna take these edges and you're gonna also fold it the same way, leaving a little bit of space, just like that. Okay, this is not gonna be perfect, you guys, but it doesn't have to be perfect because it's you're not even gonna be able to tell if you haven't creased it correctly. And then you're gonna take the pointed edge and you're gonna fold that over just like this where the line meets. Let me show you. Just like that, you're gonna fold this over just like that. And then you're gonna turn it around and you're gonna do the same to the other side. You're gonna take that pointed part and fold it over to meet the other, to meet this line right here. Okay, so there you have it. You folded both edges or both of the ends and now you're gonna refold it so that they meet just like this. And see how pretty that looks? Okay, so now we wanna staple these together. But before we do that, we wanna take our string and I've just taken this cross stitch string um, and I'm gonna select a color. This is red, let's use green. So I'm gonna take a piece of green string here. Just one piece is all you need. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna apply the glue right to the top right here, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and secure the string, hold it down onto the glue, and then I'm gonna make the top ends or the top portions meet just like this, okay? And really, you don't need this glue, but I like to add the glue because even though I'm gonna staple right above this, I want it to be secure. And I feel like if I add the glue, it's gonna stay put. All right, so here's my front, okay? And I'm gonna take my stapler now, and I'm gonna go ahead and center my stapler at the very top. I'm gonna go ahead and punch and staple. And there you go, you have your little string and your little tea bag. Wasn't that easy, you guys? So the only thing that I'm missing on here is your little tab and you guys you can use any mini punch that you have um, these are punches that i have these are not dies but i have a little butterfly punch i have a flower punch i have various punches and i decided to go with either a butterfly or a flower because these were small enough and all you do is you take two of these pieces 
of paper and you're gonna glue those back to back with the string in between. And that's really all you're gonna have to do to create what looks just like this and you will be done with your tea bag. So isn't that so cute and so easy, you guys? I really, really had fun making these and I'm sure I'll be making more of these in the near future. Um, I would like to use up all my sachet and I would love to be able to share these with my friends in friend mail. So you guys, tell me what you think about these and if you think you'll be making them. Um, Again, I will provide the information for the tutorials on the other pieces below so that you guys can learn how to make all of these other goodies as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this mini tutorial and I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.